Welcome back to Ball Street, Adam Boltwood here alongside Rory and Flav to talk about Egypt against Uruguay. Finish 1-0, this is our post-match review, post-match reaction. Jose Jimenez with the goal in the end, the winner, fantastic header. Deserved win, do you think, for Uruguay here? Yeah, it's not a classic, but they got the win, they won't care. Their fans were going bonkers in the ground afterwards. Um, they'll be over the moon with that, I think they got it. I mean, it's very easy to say this now with a bit of hindsight, but I think that they got it spot on. Mm, on the balance page, I think they deserved it. Flav, a couple oh, of chances at the end, yeah. couldn't get the post that free kick. Maybe they just edged it. They did. I think they edged it, but you'd expect them to against Egypt. Mm. And, you know, you know, Egypt are a better side than a lot of people give them credit for, even without Mo Salah. But um, they probably edged it, but I don't think they'll be happy with a display at all. I think they'll look at it being very, very frustrated. A first game in a World Cup, though, like you've got to remember, Uruguay haven't won a an opening game at a tournament for 48 years. Mm. So the fact that they've got the three points, they've already got three points in the bag, they'll be, they'll be very happy. The fact that we're going to sit here and criticise their performance will mean very, very little to them. Uh, what about Egypt, Flav? Because obviously there is one big talking point. No Salah, no party. Oh, I mean, see, what, see what you did. Yeah, they like it. It's a pun. Uh, they defended well. Yeah. Uh, El Shinawi, the goalkeeper with a few fantastic saves. But it was clear that without Salah, they didn't have much cutting edge up front. No, they did very well. They, did, they got themselves into a lot of good positions, but they, like you say, they just didn't have that finishing quality. They didn't mm -hmm. have Mo Salah there. Um, but it nearly paid off for them, you know, because... Why, why was he not playing there? This is the question. So the coach came out... I think it's the right move, Ed. But he, the coach came out and said he is fully fit. Maybe that's some mind games going on uh, against Uruguay. Clearly he wasn't. All three subs were made for Egypt. Salah didn't feature. You think this was the right move by the coach? I do. I think it was the right move. I think they were very unlike... And, you know, it's very easy for me now to look foolish saying it's the right move when they've just lost their first game. Yeah. But I do think that Hex Cooper got it right simply because... Uruguay are a very physical team. Mm -hmm. It could have backfired. If you force Salah back when he's not quite ready, it goes, and that's, that really is the end of his tournament. Whereas you can preserve him. It's a very difficult game against Uruguay anyway. They have two, what they will see as winnable fixtures coming up. Against Russia and Saudi Exactly. Right? So preserve your best player for those fixtures. Accrue six points, probably progress. It's risky though. Do you not think maybe that last substitution in the last 10 minutes they could have brought Salah on, maybe just pin him back a little bit, Uruguay? It is risky, but football's about taking risks. The manager gambled and felt that, we, that they'd done enough to get, get the draw. Everyone thought it was going to be a draw. Like you say, they've got two easier, much easier games coming up, you'd, you'd think. I, don't, I think that he did the right thing by, by not playing it. He isn't fit, otherwise he would be on the pitch, Clearly. and that's the fact. I mean, it's an interesting point you make about potentially against Russia, against Saudi Arabia, saving for those games where they could accrue the points. Uh, before we talk about how Group A is looking after these first round of fixtures, we have to talk about Luis Suarez, potentially the other big talking point from the game. Uh, pretty shocking performance. Really or, poor, yeah. Do you know what? You, I think we've got to remember, though, he's had such a long season for Barcelona. He looked off the pace. He didn't, didn't seem fresh at all. And it was you know, he's meant to be the talisman. Luis mm. Suarez is the best player on that pitch by a mile. But it was actually um, Edison Cavani who shone. Cavani, I thought, looked very good. He, was, he hit the post. Keeper made a good save from that volley. And Cavani put Suarez in. At mm. least three times. I, mean, you know, I thought Suarez should have had at, at least two goals, possibly three. There have been those sort of accusations or those question marks about Suarez at Barcelona this season and last season about his fitness. Yeah. He doesn't look 100% match fit, especially in this game. No, he, he, he looked, uh, Martin Keown said in commentary that it looks like he's towing a caravan and that's exactly what <laughs> it was. There was one moment where, where the, he let the ball run and it literally just rolled past him. and he, he just did everything he could to get it, but he just clearly wasn't fit enough. He looks like he's carrying weight. Mm. He looked really unhappy and frustrated with himself. Well, that'll be the thing for you know, Uruguay now. They've won that first game. You'd think maybe they're going to finish first or second in this group. If they do go through to knockout rounds, no one's going to be scared of them based on that performance. No, you look at, you look at that one game, you know, it could all change. You mm. could, you know, if Suarez and Cavani get it going on, mm -hmm. they've got a very young midfield behind them, so they've got the experience of those two up front, a very young midfield. If it clicks, then all of a sudden they're a very, very daunting proposition. We saw how good they can be linking up. Four years ago, they you know, knocked England out. I was in the ground and I watched Suarez just destroy us. We know how good a player he can be if he finds his feet. So, but you're right, off the back of what we've just witnessed, if Uruguay are to progress, mm. Nobody's going to be too fearful. Yeah, I think, you know, the defence, of course, they perform well. Godin alongside Jimenez, who, of course, got the winner. I think that is a big plus for Uruguay, but up front looked a bit toothless. Where does this leave Group A right now? Because, obviously, yesterday, Russia smashed Saudi Arabia 5-0. Mm. Bit of a surprise result. I don't think people were expecting that good a performance from Russia. They're obviously top of the group now. Uruguay next to them. 
Egypt, things are a bit shaky. Are you along the same lines as Rory here that perhaps they get three points against Russia, three points against Saudi Arabia, they can still go through? Absolutely, they, they can. It'll actually leave the, the, the group wide open. Um, but it puts Saudi Russia Arabia in the would, driving seat. Though. It, it, do, it does, but the, 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 the scoreline doesn't really matter in this instance now. Mm. They, you know, they, there could be three teams finishing on six points. Mm. Yeah. Um, and in, in the event, they're all likely to go through. But you see, when Russia play Egypt now, that is going to be huge. That's and next, that's the next that's game. Massive, yeah. When that game comes along, Egypt have no choice but to go for the jugular. Russia can be... Ha Bring on Salah. Russia, Russia will be so happy with a, with a point in that game because mm. they'll be going into the Saudi game thinking that they can win. Um, mm. So I think the Russians will be really pleased. And do you know what? In a weird way, I think that's beneficial for the tournament. Because mm. I think, you know, when a host nation when there's a bit of buzz, when there's a bit of liveliness around Optimism. the home team, it just lifts the whole tournament. Yeah, and uh, you know, well, and what you also need to, to, to remember is that usually the teams that go on to do very well don't always perform that well in the group stages. So it's Uruguay's yeah. performance doesn't suggest that they're a terrible outfit, but on the, sh on the showing of, of that, I, could, I still think that they'll, 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 they'll walk you know, this group stage. Well, who, I was going to say, finally, before we finish up, who do you think is now going to qualify from Group A based on what we've seen oh, in this open fixture? Who are the two teams who are going to go through? I still think Uruguay and Egypt. Okay. I, I disagree with Flav. I'm going to go Russia and Egypt. It'd be amazing. Russia, Russia and Egypt. Russia and Uruguay, forgive me. Yeah, they are the lowest ranked team in the competition, Russia, despite the fact yes. that the hosts, it would be interesting to see if they still go through. I think it is going to be Uruguay and Egypt, though, still. I think if Salah now can come on, in those second games, as you say, get those points in. You can be going through. But let us know what you think, guys, in the comments below. Thanks so much for watching. We're going to be here throughout the tournament. More post-match reviews, previews, all sorts of great stuff. So make sure you subscribe, and we'll see you next time on Ball Street.